everyone, my name is Gokiz. You're welcome to a new class. Today's tutorial will be on how to make an off-the-shoulder blouse with 720 degree prep plum. What does that mean? It just means two full circle sleeves together, yes? And one of the sleeves on the blouse is going to be a, either a puffy sleeve or a circle sleeve. Why the other one is just going to be the normal hook shoulder sleeve. And trust me, it's going to be very beautiful and easy to make. So what are the materials you need there? First, you need your cardboard paper or you drag directly onto your fabric. So I'm going to be making use of this lovely fabric here. You can see this is beautiful, isn't it? So I'm making use of this. Then I need a matching bridal satin. Can you see? You can make use of any other material. So can you see it's a good match? Then I need organza material, which is also a good match. Can you see all that? Then I'm going to need my horse hair braid, as usual. <laughs> so now let's get started from drafting to cutting. Right now, this is what we are about to make. You can see what the sketch looks like. It's an half the shoulder, as you can see. Here is going to have the normal of the shoulder sleeve while here is going to have a strap so here now it depends on what kind of this sleeve you want to have you can have a circle sleeve or a puff sleeve but here what i do is two layers of circle sleeve you could have one that certainly depends on you you could even have your normal basic sleeve but this is going to be your normal of the shoulder and then i'm going to have like a ruffle on this so it's going to be an organza ruffle on this particular sleeve and trust me it's going to be very beautiful then we'll have a peplum which is going to be 720 degrees peplum so what are the measurements required first it is the shoulder measurement mine is 17 inches half of ham hole measurement mine is eight and half my bust point vertically as you can see my bust point from the nape of my neck to the highest part of the boobs that is the bust point, 10 and half. Under the bust measurement for me, 14 and half. Waist measurement, that is from the nape of my neck to my waist, 17 inches. Bust circumference is 42 inches. Waist circumference is 36 inches around my body. My bust point is 9 inches, that is distance from one nipple to another. Come averagely, it is 8, but mine is 9. Length of the top is going to be 26 inches, while the length of the peplum will be 9. How did I get the 9? Since I said I want the length to be 26 and then the waist, vertical waist measurement is 17. I'm just going to remove this 17 from 26 to give me 9. So from here to here is going to be 17, although it's an off the shoulder. Why from the waist down here is going to be 9 inches. So first we are going to draft before we go over to the peplum. Now let's get started. Here now I have my basic bodies pattern here although i've not drilled the ham hole and all that but this is your normal basic bodies measurement how you insert the line and all that from the nape of my neck to my waist for instance this is it the length of the blouse from the nape of my neck to my waist vertical waist measurement is 17 inches but i want to have the same allowance to hold the patterns so that means i will need half an inch on the lower side to hem it to the peplum. So here I have 17 and a half, all true. Then the next measurement will be half of my ham hole, which is eight and a half. Can you see that? Then the next one, let me use the other color. So this is half of my ham hole, half of my ham hole. Then the next one will be my bust point, which is 10 and a half bust point. BP. Then the next one is under my bust measurement, which is 14 and a half. Under the bust. Then the hem of the bodies, which is waist. So that's what I have there. Then for my shoulder measurements, you already know how to do this from the beginner's class. So I have eight and a half inches. Okay, now so that's eight and a half inches for my shoulder then I do though that is not required here so the first thing I'm going to do now is how off I want this blouse to be so from four to six is fine from four to six is fine but I am going to make it five and half because I actually wanted five 
I actually wanted five, but I'm just going to make it five and a half. <clears throat> Sorry, I wanted six. I actually want it to be up by six inches, but I'm making use of five and a half. Why? Because you will need half an inseam allowance to join it to the lining to hem it to have a perfect finishing. That is why I'm using five and a half. So by the time I hem it, I'll be having it all by six. So from four to six is just nice. So I'll be making use of five and a half. I'll come here to five and a half. And I'll draw a straight line. So now it's going to be off by this. So this is the actual pattern I need. So this is the off now. So the first thing I'm going to do now is to insert my boss pan measurement. Boss pan for me it is nine inches. So my measurement is nine. So half of that is four and half. If yours is eight, so half of that will be four. Mine is four and half. Then because I'm adding seam allowance to this pattern, it's going to be, I'm going to add extra half an inch to it to make it five. Because after cutting off the panel, we use that half an inch to hem it. So that's going to be five inches. That will be starting from the boss point line. And you see that five inches, then I come to the end to insert five inches. Then I'll draw a straight line. So this is the boss pan line and you see that then for the upper part now what i'm just going to do now is come here this is the three inches eight inches standard here you should know that that we use to determine the slope so from these three inches to this point i'm going to get the midpoint that is half of that so here i have five and half so half of five and half should be two and three quarter five and half exactly two and three quarter so because remember we added half an inch to this so i'm going to add a half an inch to the two and three quarter so that will give me three and quarter so from this three inches point i will measure three and quarter three and quarter is here then i'll just connect it so can you see what i have now but we actually need from here downwards so after doing that, the next thing is to insert the dart. So you can, your dart should be half an inch to one inch is fine. If the person is so busty, you can make use of one and half. If the person is so busty and you want the bust to be prominent. So for me now, I will make use of one inch on both sides. If you are not busty at all, just make use of half an inch on both sides. But if you are using up to one inch on both sides, which makes two, you shouldn't insert more than half an inch here and whatever is left should go to this side so here now i'm going to insert half an inch here then the remaining one and a half will come here because you don't want the boss pan too small and looking funny so after doing that then you come to the under bust area and go in quarter inch more than whatever you have here so now this is half an inch here is going to be three quarter inch so three quarter inch this because quarter inch more than this then here one and a half will now become one and three quarter so that's what i have there then i'll use my ruler to connect it it's just very easy to make then make use of my hammer curve so if you are using half an inch you don't need to bother about all this wideness then i'm just going to connect if you are someone that is not so busty just connect from here straight to this point but if you are someone that is busty and you want the bust to be prominent come down by like one inch three quarter to one inch then you can just curve it out let me see how i placed that then i'll come here connect it so this is what I have. We are done with that. Then coming to the upper part here now. I'm just going to take whatever I have at the under bust. I have two and a half. So I'm going to insert that at the upper part. So one inch is going to be here. Remember it's two and a half in total. 
So one inch will be here on this side. Then the remaining one and a half will go over to this side. One and a half. So everything sum to task to two and a half. Because what I have here is two and a half. One and three quarter plus three quarter. So that gave me two and a half. One and three quarter is here. Plus another three quarter. That is it. One and a half. So as I've said, two and a half. So one and three quarter plus three quarter. So that gives me two and a half. So I have a total of two and a half here. So the next thing is to connect it up to the bust point. So that's what I have now. So that's that. We are done with that now. So the next thing for me is to insert my horizontal measurement. Here, my waist circumference is 36, so I have to divide that by 4 because it will be on fold. So this divided by 36 divided by 4, that will give me 9 inches. So I'm just going to know 9 inches by the side. Then let's calculate it that we took out. Here I have two inches, that's two inches, then half an inch to join the panels back, that makes it three inches, one inch for the side, that makes it four inches. So I'll be adding four inches to nine, which will give me 13. You can grab directly on your fabric. Then coming over to the armhole area now to insert our bust circumference. My bust circumference is 42 inches. So 42 divided by 4 is going to give me 10 and a half. So I will know 10 and a half aside. Then what do we need? Whatever is passing through this point, we are going to note that because we need to add it back to our measurement. But first, we need half an inch to join this panel together. That is one. One inch for the size same allowance. That makes it two inches. So now let me check whatever I have here. Just notice aside that's plus two inches so that you won't forget. Here I have half an inch. So that, excuse me, plus half an inch. So 10 and a half plus two, that gives me 12 and a half, plus one, that gives me 13. So I'm just going to insert 13 here. So that is that. So let me connect that so that you won't get confused. So our site has been formed. So now coming to this upper part, what I'm going to do now is this. You need to take the measurement because you can't use this actual measurement for your, of the shoulder. It's going to be too wide. So what you do, the trick is to measure from one of your bra strap to the other. Maybe I should show you that on myself. As I was saying now, the trick for and hold the shoulder, just take your measuring tape, measure from one of your brass strap to the other brass strap. Like for me, it is 12 inches. Yours might not be as wide as mine. So you just divide it into two. So that will be your, whatever you are going to use for your hold the shoulder. So for me now, I'm going to unfold to be six inches. So now in case you want it, to, I can even make use of five and a half, but the shorter where um, your neckline here is, the hopper you hope the shoulder will go. That's another tip here. Yeah. Like if I don't want it to be so off, I can make use of five and a half, and it comes out nice. Yes, and my um, of the shoulder sleeve still remain five inches. So the tighter it is, the shorter it is here, the higher your of the shoulder is going to go. But my normal measurement of my bra strap is six inches after dividing because it is twelve, and I'm not going to add any seam allowance to it. Yes, even if you are using five and a half. So that's the trick about that. Let's go back to our table. Now, since I know my upper neckline is six inches now, so let me note that aside, six inches. But we are taking off some that here. So what I'm going to do now is this. I'm going to measure what I what I have here is two and a half. Two and a half. I, I, okay, let me note that. Actually, my neckline is six inches. 
so two and a half i can just add that two and a half then i need half an inch to join this together so that's another one inch one inch so when i had it all up six inches plus two and a half that will give me eight and a half plus one inch that will give me nine and a half so i'm going to insert nine and a half here so that is that now when we are making an off the shoulder because it's off the shoulder you need to come down here between half an inch to three quarter inch yeah just to give it some ease around the bust area it's always like that so half an inch to three quarter inch here so having done that let me try to like form an l So this will be a new hampole. Let me make it obvious. So that's what we have there. Can you see that? So the next thing is to connect the hampole. But there's one thing you need to know. For hand hold the shoulder now, you will have the same measurement as the back. But the back should be wider than the front why because you know your back is broader than your front like when we are making our basic bodies pattern we come in by three quarter inch in the front but here too we are going to come in by three quarter inch but it's going to be added to the back so note that so here now i'm just going to come in by three quarter of an inch three quarter you can use here but i just want to be accurate so three quarter is here so this is three quarter inch now i came in by the same three quarter inch then i'm this will now be where i will start my hammer comb so from here now to the end of this point it is very easy there's nothing tricky about it so just use this part of your hammer curve to do that so we are as good as done so can you see that so the next thing is to cut it out but before we cut it out i want this point and this point to match because if you measure it you will might have some shortage this tends to be more than this let's measure it from this point here i have five and quarter so let me measure this point here i have five almost five and three quarter so whatever is left of this because here i just have five and what i've forgotten that so here i have five and just one bar on my measuring tape while here i have five and a half plus one bar so that means this part is shorter by half an inch so five and half and one bar so let's leave that one bar five and half then here i have five so that means it is here is more by half so now i will now have to extend this by that half half inches here so now i should have the same measurement now here i have five and half let me see here okay here too i have half and so now it is okay since we have extended so by the time we cut it out to join it it's just going to be perfect then for the neckline it depends on how low you want it to be so let me just make use of seven or seven and a half is fine for the sweetheart you can just leave it straight up like this it totally depends on you but let me just come down by seven so this is just one and a half from the of the shoulder line seven then i'll just call from the outer part to have my sweetheart move you can have any neckline it's not compulsory you have this so that's what i have now we are done and then we can cut out before cutting out your pattern make sure you go over your measurement again there's no crime over that so go over it again so let's cut it out
is what my pattern looks like. Can you see that? So now we go to the back panel. It's time to cut the back panel now. So I have my normal measurement here. Remember 17 and a half for the total length. And then it's going to be half, just like for the front, by five and half. Can you see that? I actually want it to be off by six, but because of the seam allowance to turn the lining, so I had to add extra half an inch back up, so five and a half. So it's off by this. Before taking your measurement, you won't forget your zipper allowance. You can see that's one inch on the side. Then all I need here is half of my ham hole, which is eight and a half. Then the next thing now is to insert the bust pan. For the front, it was four and a half plus half an inch seam allowance, making five. So I'm going to insert the same five inch cheese after the zipper allowance. They're coming to the half shoulder itself, five inches. Then I'll make a straight line. This one is just straight down. Let me see what I have now. So I'm going to insert my darts for the darts. For the back, half an inch, that is just fine. Half an inch. Then I'm just going to take this straight up. So though I can just stop at like half an inch upwards. So that is done. Then for the upper part, it remains that way. So now let me insert my horizontal measurement. Quarter of my waist measurement is 9. That is 36 divided by 4. 9 inches. So let me write it down. Plus. The dart, I took off 1 inch dart here. Half an inch, half an inch. That is 1. Then I will need half an inch to join it together. Making 2. Plus 2. Then for the size seam allowance, I need 1 inch. Plus 1. So everything sum total up to 12. So after the zipper allowance, I'm just going to insert two inches. That's that. Then I'll come to the ham hole area. This is half of the ham hole. So what I'll do now is my bust measurement, which is 42 inches divided by four will give me 10 and a half. 10 and a half. Then here, no dart pass through this line. So you don't need to take in any dart. Just that after cutting it up, we need half an inch on both sides, which is one. Then I'll have that. Then size seam allowance, one. So that's ten and a half plus one plus one, which will give me twelve and a half. After the zipper allowance. Twelve and a half, which is here. And let me connect that. So that's so fast. So coming to the upper part now, my neckline is six. Remember the brass strap demonstration, which is 12 divided by two, six. So now I will note that six size, six inches. Then, note that pass through here. So just the same allowance to look, join the panel together, which is one. So six plus one. So that makes it um, seven inches. So that's seven inches. From the zipper allowance, seven inches. Then don't forget the three inch, uh, three and a quarter that we took off from the front panel. We have to add it back here because the back is broader than the front. So I'm now going to add that three quarter here now. Three quarter, apart from the seven, which is the six inches for the neckline, one inch to sew this up, making seven. Then plus the three quarter, so that will give us seven and three quarter, which is actually here. here. So the next thing is to connect the new arm hole. So remember, I told you you need to come down by to the half to three quarter inch here. And I'm not going to make a straight line. So that's the new ham hole. Then I'll take my ham hole curl. Just cut that out. So that is the back ham hole, and then we can cut it out. So then another thing, in case you are having a half shoulder sleeve, 
if you do not do all this coming in by three quarter inch and all that is going to give you issues but i'm just going to show you now for the front so now looking at it so this is the front panel look at the handhold everything matches well so that was why it's good to come in by three quarter inch and hardly need to be back and it still gave us a nice one so let me start by cutting this off so we can talk about the eliminating the zip bulge so can you see that now so there are different ways of eliminating your zip bulge but I'm just going to teach you one of these, which I've not taught in some of my classes. So now, all I'm just going to do now is this. To avoid zip bulge and then the um, back coming lower than the front, all you have to do now is to measure one inch upward. That's after the zipper allowance. One inch here. And I'm going to connect straight to this point. Let me see the way I did that. And this is going to be straight. Let me confirm the one inch. Okay. The zipper allowance area is going to be straight. If you can see that, then you need to take your measurement from here. Whatever you have here, I have 13. I need to have that same 13 here too, which is fine. So we are going to go, except it's going to affect the um, panel. So, in case yours is more, just measure the 13. So, whatever is left, assuming it is more, let's say it stops around here. So, you just mark that point and then connect it straight to this point. It's as easy as that. So, having done that now, before I finish cutting it off for the neckline, what I will do is, remember for the front, I made use of 7. So, it is half by 5 and half. So I made it of seven, so maybe I should do the same seven here, or it could be lower. So it depends on your choice. So let me maintain the seven inches. Let me measure that on the line after the zipper allowance. Seven inches, because this point has to be straight. That's the zipper allowance. Have for the back, so let me just cut that off. There's different approach to doing things, so I just try as much as possible to teach you so many ways. looks like let me show you the front too right now this is what it looks like so this is for the back and this is for the front so let's go to the next step time for us to cut out the strap and the sleeve now so first let's go with the strap well remember when we're cutting out the main bodies we came off by five and a half inches but the actual neckline is six inches but we had to deduct it by half an inch because of the seam allowance to her to the lower Part to turn the lining so meaning this strap now should be six inches because we actually cut out five and a half but because of seam allowance that was how we came up by half an inch it should be six inches so after sewing it up it goes back to six inches so this strap should be six inches in length so meaning we need extra half an inch to attach it to the main bodies but because I want it to be tight and I don't want it falling off, I don't want to give any allowance, I'm not going to add any seam allowance to it. Even if you want to have seam allowance to yours, make sure it is not more than quarter of an inch. But for me, I won't be adding any seam allowance. 
so that is six inches for the length now but remember this type of strap runs through to the back so that means it's going to be six inches times two six for the front six for the back which makes it 12. if you are cutting on fold six is fine but i just want to cut out a long strip of paper so that i'll just place it on my fabric to cut it out so that means i'll be cutting out 12 inches in length now going to the width here i want it to be one and a half in wideness i want it to be one and a half but remember we need half an inch to join to the sleeve so that will make it two inches this part will be folded so you don't need to have some allowance to this part we are going to fold the fabric so meaning we need six um 12 inches in length by two inches so that two inches now will be times two because we are going to fold the fabric so now we need 12 inches by we need 12 inches by four inches 12 inches in length then four inches in width by the time we fold it the four inches it becomes two and then when we sew half an inch to the sleeve we have one and half so first let us map out the strap so now remember i told you i want 12 inches in length then for the width it is four inches so this is a height of four inches so that's the wideness then the length now is 12 inches so 12 inches is here so now this is for the strap now going over to the sleeve okay, let me explain that so this is the strap so let us just cut out the sleeve together with it now going over to the sleeve you will need some measurements first you need your round the shoulder measurement so let us go to that which is what i have here so round my shoulder measurement is 45 inches make sure you measure it not too loosely mine is 45 inch now you need your front and back neckline measurement remember when i was talking about the neckline for the upper parts for the um, for the main bodies i told you you should measure your bra strap so for me it was 12 inches for the front 12 inches for the back so when i had that up that's going to give me 24. so front and back neckline measurement is 24 for me 12 inches for the front remember the brass strap 12 inches for the back so that gives me 24 inches now to get my sleeve measurements that will be what my round shoulder measurement minus my neckline measurement so my round the shoulder measurement is 45 while the front and back neckline is 24 when i deduct that i will have 21 inches so this is my sleeve measurement 21 inches so now if you are cutting on four that means you divide this 21 by four so for me i have five and quarter so that is if i'm cutting on fold you should know that by now but what i'll just do is that I'll, i will just cut it straight so it will be easier for me to cut out on my fabric so i won't be folding so that will just be this times two because i'm cutting the whole sleeve together but if you are cutting on fold just five and quarter that is my own measurement now five and quarter here you can have seam allowance to eat but i won't the seam allowance i'll be adding to it won't be more than quarter inch i don't want it to be more than five and a half because i want it to be tight on my body because if you're on the shoulder it could be loose but i you can have extra half an inch for seam allowance but for me i'll just make it five and a half just quarter inch seam allowance to eat though i will take half an inch because i want all my house feet being fitted but how loose or fitted you want depend on your own preference so for me now I'll be cutting out five and a half but because i just want to cut it straight that will be five and a half times two which is 11. so now let us do that so i'm cutting a whole sleeve so haven't talked about the length now for me five and a half with seam allowance now so times two that will be 11 inches so that is that let me just note that 11 inches i'll still explain further don't worry going over to the width of the um, sleeve now that is how wide i want the sleeve to be on the average two and a half is just perfect for your half the shoulder sleeve two and a half is 
perfect but for me i just want to extend it a little bit that depends on your preference so i want to make it three inches so that three inches now will be folded this way because i want to make use of both my fabric on both sides now that means we we'll need extra half an inch now to join this lower part to close it up to have a neat finishing so that will be three and a half now but if you want two and a half with seam allowance yours will be three so mine with seam allowance is three and a half so when i fold it this is how the sleeve will be folded i will have seven inches so that means i will have the wideness of seven inches before folding it which is what i have here so this is it seven inches wideness by 11 inches can you see so that is the um roundy sleeve measurement so now there's another thing i need to let you know for this now this lower part should be extended by half an inch more than the upper part so that you will be able to move your arm freely now as i said you need to extend this by half an inch so as to do what to make it free for you so now upper part for me now is five and a half so the lower part is going to be what is going to be six inches so as to make it free so meaning remember i'm just cutting out a straight um fabric so meaning i will have for the upper part 11 inches why the lower part will be what will be 12 inches because this upper part is five and a half for me so on fold is going to be 11 why the lower part is six inches five and a half for the upper part six inches for the lower part so this lower part will be 12 why the upper part will be 11 so what i'll just do now is to cut out 12 inches So when we fold it, I'll now show you how to do that. So that is 12 inches. This is the actual measurement for the upper part. And this is the actual measurement for the lower part. So that means 12. So sleeve. So let me cut it out. You can actually cut yours on fold, but I just want to cut mine straight. I just place it on the fabric. So first for the strap now, so it's going to be like this. So you just cut out your fabric straight like this. Then when it's folded, can you see that? Then you have something like this, so front and back. So now let us measure it. So can you see I have six inches by two inches. So now when we sew half an inch to the sleeve, we'll be left with one inch, one and a half inches wideness. You can see that is easy. So all you have to do is to place this pattern on your fabric, cut it out. So when you want to sew it up, you just fold it straight away. So that is it about the strap. So now going over to the sleeve. The sleeve too is going to be like this when you fold it. Can you see? And then you fold it again. So this is what I'm having. I was talking about. Can you see our sleeve is formed? Can you see that? So the sleeve has been formed. So that is how easy it is. So now let us fold it back and then we finish up with the upper part and lower part I was talking about. So now I said on fold, I was talking about that I will have five and a half. Can you see that? Then the lower part. So if you are cutting yours this way, that is what I meant by unfold. But I just cut a long one so that it will just be easier. I will just fold up. Now, as I've said, my shoulder measurement unfold now is five and a half for the upper part. It's actually five and a quarter, but with seam allowance, it became five and a half. So that's what I have here now. So this is five and a half. Then the lower part, I told you, it needs to be half an inch more. Half an inch or three quarter. So the lower part is going to be six. Can you see it's actually six? Because we measured out 12. Then take your ruler, connect it this way. So as I've said, 
half an inch to quarter inch. The lower part must be more by half an inch to three quarter inch. So this is what I have. So now this is how the sleeve is going to be. So it's going to be attached this way. Let's say this is the body. It's going to be attached this way. So you have more space around these parts. And then this will be the upper part. So it's just as easy as that. So let us confirm the height. I told you on a normal day, two and a half is fine. Which is around here. That's if you want two and a half inches. But I want mine to be more. So three inches for me. Then half an inch for seam allowance. So when we are sewing it up, we'll be taking this in. And we will be left with the three inches. So that is how to cut the sleeve for and hold the shoulder. So this is the strap. And this is the sleeve. So this is what the sleeve looks like. So now let's move to the next. It's time to cut out the peplum now. I want you to listen attentively. There's nothing difficult here. As you can see, calculation of 720 degrees peplum. Sorry for my voice because I'm done with cold. Now, this is what a full circle looked like. The 360 degrees, your normal full circle, full peplum. This is what it looks like. It's a full circle. And this full circle is 360 degrees. And then we use this um, formula to determine our waist radius to get this circumference. Like for me, my waist circumference is 36. So this is the calculation we use to determine this. There's nothing difficult in this place. So the formula is waist radius equals waist measurement plus seam allowance divided by 6.28. It is a constant, so don't bother yourself about it. But in this case, we want to have a 720 degrees peplum, meaning two of this 360, that is two of this full circle. So this is what it will look like. One full circle, one full circle, as 720 degrees, with the same waist measurement of 36. So what does that mean? That means we'll need two full circle for 36 meaning you have to divide your waist measurement into two So you so which means one for the front one for the back So for the front you have a full circle for half of your waist measurement Full circle for half of your waist measurement for the back. It's simple as that So we need two full circle one full circle for the front one full circle for the back So to get that just divide your waist measurement by two so mine is 36 inches divided by 2, that will give me 18 inches. So meaning my waist measurement for the front is 18 inches. My waist measurement for the back is 18 inches. So the circumference of here, this full circle has to be 18. Why the circumference of this second one has to be 18? One for the front, one for the back. So what you have to do is to divide your waist measurement by 2. So mine is 36. Impute your own here. And divide it by 2 to give you whatever you have. So for me, it is 18. Going back to this formula now. This formula now. Waist radius equals 18 inches plus 1. The seam allowance for 1 inch. And then you have 1 inch on both sides after cutting one side. So 18 plus 1 will give me 19 inches. Divided by 6.28. So when I divide 19 inches by 6.28, I have 3.025. There's zero after the decimal, so approximately three inches. So my waist radius now is three inches. So I'll use this waist radius to cut out one full circle, which will be for the front, another one full circle, which will be for the back, because we are making use of half of our waist measurement to calculate for the front, for the back. So we'll have two full circle. My waist radius now is three inches. Now, another essential thing we need to do is the length of the peplum. From my measurement here, the length of my peplum is 9. That is from here down to here. It is 9 inches. So note that length of peplum is 9 inches. So total length of peplum now from here to here, including the radius. It means waist radius plus peplum length. My waist radius is 3 inches, which is here. Then my peplum length is 9 inches plus one. Why did I add one? I need one inch to M this to the lining. So that is why I have the plus one. So nine plus one is 10. So waist radius three inches plus 10 will give me 13 
inches is as easy as that so what do we need we need this particular one and this so my waist radius is three then the total length of the peplum is 13 inches so we need these two measurements so now let's start folding to cut our peplum for us to cut out the peplum now and the fabric i'm making use of has pattern so i need to be careful but if you are someone that your uh, fabric doesn't have pattern no problem and i want more of this side to show on the peplum so i'll be folding more on this side from here our total length of peplum is now 13 so which will be a guide so what i have to do is this let me get my measuring tape yeah, I'm back. <laughs> so now, since it is 13, I'll just measure from this edge and measure down 13. So to be on the saver side, just measure 14 to 15. So here, this is 15 inches now. So you see, 13 or 15 or 14. Then I'm going to fold this way. Can you see? This is how you fold for a full circle. After doing that, then I'll take my measuring tape again. After folding, measure the 14 or 15. Can you see that at this point? Then I'm going to fold it over again. So, can you see how I folded that? So, that will be for the first peplum. So, that is how I'm going to insert my radius and all that so what i can do i can just cut this off this way can you see i can just cut this off to make it easier and then fold then i'm going to fold after cutting this off then i'm going to fold it over again from this point where i cut it off fold over another 14 or 15 cut it out it's as easy as that let me go over it again measure 13 or 14 to be on the saver side fold it over after that measure 13 or 14 fold it over so we'll be making use of this point this portion that's what we'll be making use of going over it again so this is what it looks like can you see after folding it so as i've said i can cut this hole this way or better still just draft on it so now it's time to start drafting on it so let me bring the camera closer now let's start drafting it remember from our measurements here the waist radius is three so that will be the first thing i'm going to insert so from this edge i'm going to insert three inches Check three, 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 three. So now here I have three. Then the length of the peplum, which is 13 now. So from the edge, I'm going to make 13. So now this is what I have. So let me confirm this. So 
So I have four and three quarters, so let me check. So double, so that's nine and a half. Double, I have 19. So it is correct. Because remember, half of my waist measurement is 18 plus one inseam allowance. So that is why it is 19. So from what I have here again, yeah, four and three quarter. So when I double it, it gave me nine and a half. So when I double nine and a half, it gave me 19 inches. So can you see that? So now since I have the exact measurement, so that is where the my seam, I will run my stitch on. So that means I will need half an inch seam allowance here to join to the upper part. We already had one into this lower part from our calculation here, but we have not added to this upper part. So what I will do now is to add half an inch to this. Half an inch or two. So that's the seam allowance. So that means I will be cutting on this part, but I will be sewing on this part. So that is it now. Let me cut this out. So this is what I have now. So I'm going to cut out this point. But I don't want it to cut it out here to have it even. So I'm going to fold the same way I folded for this, cut out this, then place it on each other to cut this off. Right? Because that's like uh, 14 times 2, which is 28, and the yard is 36. So you can you see that? So I've not even used up to one yard of fabric, and I still have some part here that I can use for the Part. So you can see, you can save your fabric as much as possible. So let me just finish up with this. So this is what we have now. So looking at this, you see this is a full circle. And also this is a, another full circle. Can you see? So let's check the distance. Here we have... 10 and half. The reason being that we added half to this upper part. So the length of the peplum is actually 9 plus seam allowance at the lower part. That's 10. Half an inch up here. That is 10 and half. So here we have 10 and half, which is fine. So after cutting out the lining, we are going to slit open one side. So this will be for the front. This will be for the back. So that is it on the peplum. So now, with the leftover fabric, we can cut all of the upper bodies and cut out the lining and all that. Right now, my camera skipped this part. I think it stopped filming when we started, when we got to this part, which I mean, it's a very essential part. It is adding the zipper allowance to the back panel of the peplum. Looking at it now, you see this very one is more than this by half an inch. But that part was kit, so I just had to take my time to explain it again. So when you are placing this very one to cut it out, to cut the back panel, you, all you have to do is to just pull this down until you have half an inch on this side. Because assuming the cone is still there, so, and you fold it for the other one, so instead of placing it accurately on the former, you just pull it down to have half an inch on this side. So this half an inch, because it's only fold of four, by the time we slit one part open, you have one inch on both sides, because it's only fold of four. So half inch times four, that is one, that would be two inches, one inch on one side for the zipper. So please, I just had to talk about that. So pull it down to have, pull it down to have exactly half an inch, just like we did for the full circle dress. So now let's go. For the upper bodies now, what I just did was, the remaining part where we cut out, I just folded it over because I want to cut everything all at once. So now for this panel, this part will not be cut off. So that will be the last one you put on the folded area. So don't forget that. So this is, will be on the folded area, then pin it down. That's very important. Then this, this, this. Then the straps, I'll just open it up and cut it in full. That will save me. Now can you see that? 
So now I'm going to pin it all down and then cut it up to half to two panels. That's all. Now I've cut out all the patterns. So these are what I have. First, let's start from this very one. So the same way we cut out this pattern is how you are going to cut out the lining. Can you see? So this is for the front panel. Then for the back. So you can see that. So this is what the back looks like. So it's just so easy. Then the next thing, the peplum we already cut that, cut that out. So we are going to cut the lining too. Then these are the sleeves. So after cutting the sleeve, so this is what it will look like. Can you see that? Then we are going to hem half an inch to close it up. So you are going to cut out the lining too. Or better still, you could just cut two of these. So that's for the sleeve. Then the strap. So this is what I have. Can you see that? So it's just going to be like this. So that's it on the strap. So now we now go over to cut out these other sleeve for the side. It's time to cut out the sleeve for the other side. Remember this was the sketch I made you so, so you could just make use of two circle sleeve. I've already explained that. So in case you want that, you can just make use of this explanation to do so you just go for the waist radius so you make use of this so you don't need to divide your measurement by two but i just decided to do something different so that at least you learn something new so i will love to go for this type of sleeve it's a full circle puffy sleeve you can see how it goes and i have the tutorial also on youtube but this will be a lesser one of a half circle that's on youtube was a full circle puffy sleeve so what are the things needed now? As you can see, calculation of half circle for the ham hole. So now you need your ham hole measurements. From here, how do you determine that? Half of your ham hole measurement times two. So my ham hole round for me, it is 17 inches. So now back to that, since we know that. So the calculation will now be ham hole radius equals ham hole circumference. That is your ham hole round, mine is 17 plus one inch, which is the same allowance, divided by 3.142. That is the constant for half circle. So what do I do next? 17 inches plus one, divided by 3.142, which means 18, when you have this up, divide by this. So I'll be left with 5.72, approximately 5.7, or you can make it of seven, uh, five and three quarter inch. So now since we have five, so this is what we'll use to calculate our radius. So now let's get started. First here you need your basic sleeve. So here I have my basic sleeve. As you can see, this is just a guideline because I don't want to have elastic to it and I want it to be puffy so as not to have any inconvenience around my arm. So the length of my basic sleeve is 11 inches. Half an inch for seam allowance here, half an inch at the upper part. So now the actual length will be actually 10. So, but here it is 11 inches. So then I know my arm hole radius to be 5.7. So I'll be making use of this brighter satin for the sleeve just to have something different. So now I'm going to fold, show you how to fold for a half circle. Here I have um, one and a half or almost three yards of fabric here, but you need about one and a half yard or one and a quarter. For this but since this is a leftover fabric I'm using so what I'm just going to do now is this this is the fabric as you can see so I'm just going to fold over so how did the dry determine the amount to fold over the length of this sleeve is 11 inches plus the radius of 5.7 let's just assume 6 so that would be 11 plus 6 that's 16 then I add extra 3 to it because I want the puff at the lower part. So 16 plus 3, that's like 19. So that means I'll just fold over like 20 inches. So this is 20 now. Or you could just make it more to be on the silver side. So this is 20 actually. So I'm just going to fold it over this way. 
you see that after doing that then i'll fold it this way that's how to fold for a half circle as i've said the amount you want to fold fold it over after doing that then you fold it diagonally but if this is a full circle we fold over again no but this just fold diagonally so now let me move the camera closer then you can start drafting it's time to start drafting so first i will insert the armhole radius of 5.7 so in case you want some gathering around this part too you can instead of that 5.7 you can make it 6 so you have excess then you can pleat it but i'll just make use of that 5.7 which is here So this is it this is 5.7 then for the length of the basic sleeve here remember it is um 11 inches so i'm just going to add extra three inches to it one two three so that is 14. so from here now i'm going to measure 14 so what we folded is quite okay so that's why i said you can fold excess in case you want to change your mind but what i have here is just perfect so if you want more you could make it 15. If you want the coffee to be much but i'm okay with this So this is it, the radius 5.7, then the length of the sleeve itself, 14, is actually 11, then I added extra 3, 1, 2, 3 to it to make it 14. So now I'm going to cut it out. So here now I'm going to cut exactly on this, to still have a little excess to pleat at the upper region here. But if you don't want any pleat at all, you just had half an inch seam allowance to this point. But I won't do that, I'll just cut it off. So right now I'll just cut this off. This is what it looks like now. Can you see that? Then another essential thing we need to consider is this part we are going to gather it up so we need to consider the measurement at this part because for this part we can like you know fold it but for this part we have to reduce some inches here after folding it up so to know what to trim off now so how you have to do place this side here then measure from here now so from this point I'm just going to curve it down here. And you see that? That's the open area. So now the sleeve is ready. So the sleeve is ready, and that's it on that. Now we have come to the end of today's class with all our panel cutters and trust me just for this alone this upper bodies alone i made use with the peplum inclusive i made use of one and a half yards you won't believe that but that is what i made use of just one and a half yards so now looking at all what i have now i'm going to cut out the lining exactly the same way i've cut out all this except for the strap so haven't seen that now so then for the sleeve you can make use of organza or taffeta it's not necessary you don't compose really have to make use of either satin so that's another option i just have to show you so that's that on that then i would love i initially wanted to use the navy blue lining but this would have just been the best color because i have more of this blue 
on the outfit can you see so this will be the best lining to make use of and then the zipper so having seen all this now i'll make use of this lining i'm going to cut it out exactly as i have here then for the sleeve i already cut it out except if i want to change my mind to make use of tapeta or organza then i'll cut it exactly the same way because i want to see creativity i want to see different styles i want you to manipulate all what i've taught you not just doing it exactly the, the same way i have cut it out so now if my tutorial has been helpful if it has been helpful as i've said make sure you make yours and please no part of this video should be used for monetary purpose they are all works of the signature so see you in the sewing class bye